So let's do another example. A boy kicks a ball with a force of 100 newtons due east, and at the same time, the girl kicks it with 200 newtons at an angle of 120 degree degrees. What is the magnitude and direction of the net force and acceleration? So here's where we're going to draw a diagram. And this is called a free body diagram or a vector diagram. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture of the 100 newton vector. And it is acting to the east. And then we're going to draw a picture of the 200 that's at an angle of 120 degrees. So 120 degrees would be over here. And it's going to be twice as long. So you notice that these are not at right angles to each other, right? So we're going to have to find the net force. So first of all, let's talk about drawing that net force. It's really important that you draw your diagrams as arrows and that you redraw them so that they are tip to tail. So I could redraw them like this. I could redraw my east one up here, or I could redraw my 120 degree one up here. In either case, my resultant is going to start and end like this. So this is my net force. It's the vector sum of those. Well, these are not at right angles, so we're going to need to find the x and the y of the net force in order to find the magnitude and the direction. So we're going to make a little chart. So our force, our x, and our y. And remember, x is uh, our cosine theta, and y is our sine theta. And somebody asked me, what do we need to be in? Degrees on your calculator. So force one and force two. Force one is due east. So it's literally 100 newtons on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis. And force two is going to be 200 times the cosine, 200 times the cosine of 120 and 200 times the sine of 120. So I'm going to plug that into my calculator. And I'm getting negative 100 newtons, OK? And 200 times the sine of 120 is going to be positive 173 newtons. So my net force has an x of, so I'm just going to add those together, 0, and a y of 173 newtons. And that makes pretty much sense, sense, by the way, I drew this, right? It's kind of pointing up to the north. So the magnitude of it is equal to x squared plus y squared. So r is going to be equal to the square root of 0 squared plus 173 newtons squared, which is going to give us 173 newtons. And the direction, if I did this using tan theta, um, it's going to be tan negative 1 of y over x, which is tan negative 1 of 173 over 0. We're not going to be able to do that. It's not going to give us a tan number. Um, because it's lying on the axis, and you can see it's like a point. It has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, so it's pointing north. Um, so it has a direction of 90 degrees. Remember that for our polar coordinates, this is 0 degrees, this is 90, 180, 270, and we always measure from the positive x-axis. Now, it turns out that if these two forces are acting concurrently, the force, that net force is what's going to produce the acceleration, right? And F net equals MA, 
and the direction of the force and of the acceleration are going to be the same. We've already talked about that. We said if the net force was to the right and you're moving to the right, then you're accelerating to the right. So I'm just going to find my acceleration vector by taking my net force and dividing it by my mass. I'm just going to take the absolute value of that, 173 newtons, and I need to give you a mass of the ball. And let's say that the mass is one kilogram to make it easier for us. So the acceleration is going to be 173 meters per second, and it's going to have the exact same direction as the force. The force, if you're pushing in the upward to the north, then the acceleration is upward to the north. All right. So force and, ex and acceleration are, di are directly related. If I were to make a graph of force versus acceleration, if you look at this equation, it looks similar to the generic equation for a line. And don't get confused here, there's two m's, but this is a slope, right? And in this formula, this is the mass in kilograms. So if I put F on the y-axis and I put A on the x-axis and I make a graph of this, the slope is going to be equal to the mass. So in, um, in a lab that you will do, you're going to look to see if, um, well, Let's hold off and talk about that later. So if I make a graph of force and acceleration divide, this means this is a direct relationship, which means that if I double my force and my mass stays constant, then my acceleration will double. If I cut my force in half, then my acceleration will be in half because it's a direct relationship. But for a constant force, Okay, acceleration and mass are indirectly related. So a, an indirect or inverse uh, equation is y equals a over x, where a is a constant. Um, and so if we were to fit these together, right, and we put acceleration on the y-axis and we put m on the x-axis, it's going to be an inverse relationship. At, at very small masses are going to have large accelerations. So if I double the mass, I'll have half the acceleration. If I cut the mass in half, I'll have twice the acceleration because it's an inverse relationship. All right. Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So I think one of the, the, the uh, most common examples of this is, is a gun firing a bullet, firing a projectile. So think about it. When you fire a weapon, the bullet goes out this way because there's some kind of force pushing it this way. And what Newton's law says that the bullet has to push equal and opposite on back on the force. So if it's the expanding gases pushing the bullet out, then the bullet pushes equal and opposite to it. So there's force pairs. So think about a rocket engine. If you have a rocket engine thrusting through space, uh, gas gets ejected out of the engine. So the two objects are the gas and the engine. And as a result, the engine push the, the gas pushes back on the engine. Okay, so there's always two objects and they're pushing on each other equal and opposite. So let's look at some examples. Let's take you on the earth, right? You push down on the earth with your weight, and the earth pushes back equal and opposite on you. So the two objects are you and the earth. So if you push on the earth with your weight, then the earth pushes back on you equal and opposite to that. So if you weigh 200 pounds, the earth 
pushes back on you with 200 pounds. Let's take that and word it a little differently. So now we have an apple here, and we're going to say that the apple is hanging on a limb, and the earth pulls down on the apple with its weight. So I said the earth pulls on the apple. That's our action. What is the reaction? Well, the two objects are earth and apple. So the apple pulls on the earth. Let's talk about a few others. A hammer hits a nail. So the action would be the hammer hitting the nail. And the reaction would be the nail hitting equal and opposite on the hammer. So think about if you just slap your hand on the table, right? You could break your hand. And that's not because it's pushing harder on your hand than you push on it. It's because your hand just can't handle it. Consider two skaters holding hands and they push off from each other. The boy pushes on the girl and the girl will push equal opposite on him. The bigger one will have less acceleration. The earth pulls on the moon to hold it in orbit. So the moon pulls on the earth. The earth pulls down on you with your weight. So you pull back on the earth with your weight. Now, listen to this. An apple pulls on a stem with its weight. The stem pulls back on the apple. I didn't say the earth pulls on the apple with its weight. I said the apple pulls on the stem. So I've changed my two objects. And then a force pushes backwards on the floor as it as it walks forward. So when I push, so when I'm walking, right, I push on the floor like this and the floor pushes me equal and opposite. The reason why the earth doesn't move backwards is because it's so big and mass and acceleration are inversely proportional for the same force. So the earth is huge, so it doesn't move forward, it doesn't move um, backward, I uh, don't push with enough force to overcome its inertia. All right. And that'll be it for this lecture.